Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I wouldn't even call this a wipe -a to be honest. There's certainly plenty of wiping, but in the current state of the fight, I don't really think it's worth giving a full video presentation on this. But since it's Cho'Gal, who's a major lore character, I thought you guys might actually want to have a look at him nonetheless. I'm going to show you a few wipes on this. Now, the main problem we're having in this fight right now is that there's a problem with the beta, whereby... Any ability that disables you completely, any kind of hard disable like a mind control or an asphyxiate, has a chance to disconnect you from the server. Now, that happened an awful lot, and we eventually just gave up on that. It's like, hey, look, our healer just got DC'd and we wiped, yeah. So, a little bit of a pain in the ass. But, I'll give you an overview of what's going on here, as well as a little bit of voice acting. <laughs> Chogal's pretty entertaining, honestly. He gives a bunch of weird quotes throughout the entire instance. He actually appears around the instance as well and gloats and taunts. He's literally gone mad by the looks of it because he's possessed by, from what I can tell, the spirit of Kthun, which is why he's got eyes growing out of his flesh and all sorts of crazy nonsense. This fight is really complicated in terms of how many actual abilities are available. The first thing you might notice is something that's a little bit weird. It's actually obscured there by my quartz casting bar a bit, but there is a bar under there, which is the corruption bar. Now, corruption is a mechanic that will gradually be applied to you throughout the fight, depending on how many abilities you get hit by. A lot of it's avoidable, some of it isn't. If you reach 100% corruption, you will get a debuff that means you take 100% more damage, but it also makes your spells instant cast. Sounds great, right? No, because it reduces all healing taken by 100%, so you will die very quickly to the AoE damage. Once you hit 50, you'll get something called Accelerator Corruption, which means that you get it an awful lot faster. It's not a nice thing at all, and you really do want to avoid it. Right. One of his nastiest mechanics is the ability to mind control certain people in the raid. On the 10-man mode, he mind controls two people, and he will make them worship him. Now, when they're worshipping him, he will gain a stacking damage buff very, very quickly indeed, which means you have to interrupt your mind control members of the raid to break the mind control. Any kind of interrupt will do, a stun will do as well, although do watch out for using stuns that are too long, because, of course, that means you are taken out of the fight for a while, and that's never good. What he'll also do, as you can see right there, is he'll summon a Corrupted Adderant. Those are nasty adds that have to be killed very quickly. They do a wide variety of unpleasant things, including a 20-yard area of effect shadow damage thing that causes a bunch of corruption. You can interrupt that, and you should. They'll also do a Spray of Corruption, which is a high single-target damage attack on the tank, which will also increase corruption level. And if he's left alive too long, and Cho'Gal casts something called Fester Blood, then he'll do a massive Shadow AoE every two seconds, which increases the entire raid's corruption. Not good. It definitely needs to die before that happens. Oh, and he's got a Shadow Crash, just to make matters even more interesting. That's just like the one on Vezax. Little thing on the floor, and then he'll fire a Dark Crystal through there as you just saw on the screen get hit by it that's going to give you a lot of corruption as well as hurting you this is a really hectic fight and that's not all he does either he's got a couple of elemental abilities you saw there the fire patches on the floor you might have seen the elementals being summoned next to him they give him a buff you can't stop this buff from occurring but it will give you a warning as to what's going to be happening He's got Flames Orders and Shadows Orders. Shadows Orders grants him something called Unleashed Shadows, which does a big shadow AoE to the raid every now and again. Flames Orders causes him to throw a bunch of patches of fire all over the ground, as you can quite clearly see there. Standing in them is bad. Oh, and melee attacks from him do an additional 20,000 fire damage. A little bit unpleasant. Ooh, yes. But yeah, you've got to watch out for that conversion. Interrupting the conversion mind control is one of the trickiest things. It's easy enough just to tab and counterspell if you're a mage. If you've got two mages in your group, then you won't have any problems with this at all. Unless, of course, you land a counterspell on the same target. The best thing you can probably do is have one of the range do a ranged interrupt and then get one of the melee to keep an eye on the melee group. Like I say, the conversion is random. It will not happen on the tank, but it could potentially happen on anybody else. Oh yeah, but that's not all he does, by the way. He's got a lot more nonsense on his particular menu. So he's got something that is called Festering Blood. I talked about that earlier. However, 
that's not the only effect it has. It summons blood of the old god from all the congealed blood pools around the area, as well as doing a bunch of raid-wide damage. That'll create a huge number of adds that have to be killed. They can't be tanked. You've just got to AoE them. You've got to be very, very precise with how you do so. Now, we haven't seen that yet, but you'll certainly see it very soon indeed. You may have noticed that these corrupting adherents actually leave pools on the ground. They're kind of like the Lich King's Defile. You've got to watch out for those and move the ad around so that you don't end up standing in them. Those pools are actually turned into adds by the Fester Blood ability. So you might see them fairly soon on this video, as I recall. Kill the adherent right here. Now, there we go. That's the blood right there. Not nice, these things at all. They hit quite hard. They can't be tanked. You've just got to be very, very careful with AoEing them. It's best to try and stack up for that, just at least so that you know that they're coming in the same direction, so you'll be able to catch them. Oh, yeah, and in Phase 1, he also does this eye laser thing, which puts double nasty debuffs on the tank. You just saw it right there. just annihilated me. Yeah, it's physical and shadow damage taken up by 20%. Oh, yeah, and that's just Phase 1. Holy... Oh my god, this fight is good. It's really complicated, honestly. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on that you have to bear in mind. Once you've learned all the abilities, and he has this just huge selection of them, the actual execution of it doesn't seem to be all that hard. But, honestly, because there's just so much stuff going on, it's going to take everyone a while to learn this. It has been killed by a couple of guilds in beta, but again, just bear in mind that as a direct result of the disconnection bug, it's really not worth trying this until they actually fix it. We decided to have a go because, hey, it's Cho'Gal. We want to see the final boss of the dungeon. But I'm looking forward to actually taking him down once they fix the bugs and we can get into phase two, whereby there are many Cthun-style tentacles and crazy, crazy things abound. That was just a quick look, folks. I wouldn't really call that a wipe -a per se because I didn't show you phase two, but I just thought you might want to have a look at Cho'Gal. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I shall see you next time.